In the 1840s, steam propulsion was making its way into the ranks of various navies' warships. This had taken three main forms. Firstly, the conversion of mid-sized, mostly out-of-date warships to include steam power in the form of screw propulsion, but these used fairly weak engines and they were therefore fairly slow coast defence ships, whose main advantage was largely the ability to make their way around harbours independent of the wind. Secondly, small craft such as sloops and frigates were being launched with steam plants built into them from the start. The smallest of these, harbour craft and non-rated vessels, could have either paddle or screw propulsion, whilst the frigates used screws to keep their gun decks clear. The last form was the ship of the line, or line of battleship, or liner, or battleship, all four terms being applicable in this time period. In this, most navies were quite conservative. Early steam engines were very much an auxiliary. They were vulnerable to incoming fire, they were heavy, they took up space, and they were potentially dangerous if breached. Plus there was now a fire on board. Not something that you necessarily wanted in an expensive ship of the line that, in time of war, could and probably would be subjected to an awful lot of incoming shot and, latterly, shell fire. Nonetheless, there was still a fair bit of discussion about converting existing vessels to include some form of steam engine, and maybe even risking a ship or two designed from the ground up to include them. Into this mix came the French designer Dupuis de Lôme, and a fortuitous coincidence in a rise of tensions between Britain and France. This allowed him to propose the construction of a slightly expensive but purpose-built steam-powered screw-driven battleship, which would be named Prince de Jeanville, in honour of a noble who was one of the loudest voices calling for a larger and better French navy. Noble, as at this stage in the time France was going through the Bourbon Restoration period. The ship was designed as a two-decker, but thanks to advances in construction during the 19th century, a two-deck ship of the line could now carry 90 guns, which was previously the province of three-deck second rates. The vessel was duly ordered in July 1847 and laid down in February 1848, almost immediately after which France decided to have another revolution, and when the French Second Republic popped up by the end of the year, the ship was renamed 24 Février. The ship was then launched in May 1850, and shortly after that, the president, Louis-Napoleon Bonaparte, began consolidating power and making a series of moves that would eventually see the formation of the Second French Empire within a couple of years, and so the ship was renamed again to Napoleon. I mean, they put a Bonaparte in charge of a French Republic. What did they think was going to happen? Anyway, the ship commissioned in May 1852 just before the coronation of her land-based counterpart, albeit mostly for PR purposes, the ship was ostensibly named after the original Napoleon. In service, the ship proved a revelation. Despite having only two full gun decks, her great length of 255 feet meant that she displaced about as much as an Océan Class 3-decker, or the more recent Valmy, at just over 5,000 tonnes. Her 90 guns consisted of a lower gun deck of 32 single 30-pounders and four Peha 66-pounders. The middle gun deck carried 26 of the lighter weight 30-pounders and another four Peha guns, and the open main deck supported 14 of the 164mm shell-firing guns and 10 single 30-pound carronades. With an average speed of 12 knots and a top speed of almost 14, courtesy of a single 574 indicated horsepower engine that drove a single four-bladed screw at a rate, courtesy of some basic gearing, of about 26 to 30 French revolutions per minute. Since the screw's four blades meant that it could not be hoisted out of the water, an arrangement was made to instead detach it from the shaft when the ship was cruising under sail. Fast, Agile and well-armed, she was initially still ranked as a third-rate, as there was a series of 100-gun ships sitting between her and the 130-gun Océans. But their conversion to steam power cost them 10 guns apiece, thus making them 90-gunners, and with Napoleon the better ship in all other aspects, and now with their armament about equal, she was soon promoted to being a second-rate, or ship of the second rank in period French terminology. Her only vice was the engine and coal storage meant that she couldn't carry quite as many supplies as a sail-only ship, and so she would cruise only in European waters for the most part. 
Having kick-started an Anglo-French naval arms race, which saw numerous ships of the line built either with steam power or converted to it, Napoleon herself would have her engines and armament replaced during her service and would see action in the Crimean War, ironically alongside instead of against the Royal Navy, proving her power plant's usefulness as she was able to position herself in the best bombardment positions whenever she liked, whilst also playing tugboat to numerous sail-only ships that were present either getting them into or out of position, and other times helping to haul them through the Dardanelles when the wind was contrary to Allied purposes. But, as revolutionary as she was, less than a decade after her launch, the arrival of Gloire and Warrior on either side of the channel saw her rendered second line. Although kept around as a useful reserve for a while, she would be eventually sent to the breakers in 1876. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.